The time was the 1970s, the high watermark of the tennis boom. And tennis players weren't just athletes, they were rock stars. Crossover cultural icons commanding big time attention all over the world. And so Tennis Channel is pleased to offer an exclusive presentation of one of that era's finest events, the nationally televised Pepsi Grand Slam, a four-man ATP tournament that took place from 1976 to 1980. The Pepsi Grand Slam, a high-stakes shootout featuring the game's very best. The passionate Jimmy Connors always leaving it all on the court. His biggest rival, the understated Swede Bjorn Borg. The young John McEnroe making his way to the top. Arthur Ashe, classy and compelling. And a host of other top players. Vetus Carolitis, Manuel Arantes, Brian Gottfried, and the dashing Argentine Guillermo Vilas. They're all here, giving their all. It's the Pepsi Grand Slam, only on Tennis Channel. Hi, I'm Kevin Frazier, and welcome to Tennis Channel Classics. You know, throughout the history of tennis, there have been special events that really help promote our sport in ways that are both innovative and engaging. One such competition began in 1976. It was called the Pepsi Grand Slam, a four-man ATP event pitting a quartet of the game's very best male players, often including those who'd recently earned Grand Slam singles titles. It aired nationally on TV on CBS, and the compressed format of the Pepsi Grand Slam was exceptionally compelling, and trust me, these were fierce battles. Now, our match today stars two brilliant left-handers, John McEnroe and Guillermo Vilas. I love saying that name. They were in a playoff for third place from the 1980 Pepsi Grand Slam, and you know, you know, when it came to tennis, hitting the ball with their left hand was just about the only thing that these two had in common. McEnroe was an all-court player whose combined finesse and attack made his game special. Vilas, meanwhile, was a very physical baseliner, and his forceful topspin ground strokes often ground opponents into the dust. The style contrast between Johnny Mac and Willie made for very engaging tennis. Let's get you right out to CBS's Pat Summerall and Tony Trabert and the 1980 Pepsi Grand Slam match between John McEnroe and Guillermo Vilas. Players ready? Vilas, Vilas at the far end, John McEnroe with his back to you. Vilas about to serve. <laughs> And Pat, that the, we've had quite a bit of rain last night and this morning. This court is wet. Oh. They put some extra top dressing on it to try to absorb some of the moisture. These are called all weather courts, hard through. The water does run through very nicely, but we've got an awful lot of rain. What other effects does it have? Well, if it's if it's not too wet. The footing is actually better than when the court dries out, but if it is a little bit uh, wetter than normal, the balls get heavier. It's a slower game than normal because the balls will pick up the granulation, some of the moisture, and the top dressing.
1530. Because of those adverse weather conditions and because it is still threatening, this is an eight game pro set. break point for McEnroe and McEnroe's gotten a couple of cheap errors out of Velos just in normal rallies. Service break and leads one game to none. First set. Eight game pro set. McEnroe to serve. McEnroe leading one game to love will serve from the far end now. The wind is a crosswind and uh, pretty substantial, too. It'll have an effect. In the three days that we've had matches here, Pat, the wind has been in a different direction each day. Mm -hmm. First day it was blowing from left to right on the viewer's screen. Now it's going right to left. Yesterday it was blowing from the far end toward us. Just slipped, trying to recover. 15 all. And you see him knocking the top dressing out of his shoes. That's one of the things the players will be doing, much like you do in football when you play in muddy conditions. You've got to keep that mud out of those cleats. You just hope that neither player injures himself due to the conditions. They're not, they're not treacherous, but it's just more slippery than they're accustomed to. Good defensive lob by McEnroe. It had Velos back by the baseline, but Guillermo was up to it. Forty. It's strong serve from McEnroe. Being a left-hander, it always surprises you when it comes out to that side of your when you return. You expect him to swing it. <laughs> and you know they're not going to swing it all the time, but when they go the other way, it's a little bit. Uh, it catches you by surprise a lot of the time. McEnroe just doing a little court maintenance himself. That's out. The game. McEnroe, he leads two games to love. So far, Pat Vilas seems to be a little impatient, being more aggressive than you would normally expect him to be. On the other hand, when he played Borg, he was almost defensive. He was willing to keep the ball in play, but didn't do much with it at all. And then lost severely. Two and one to board. McEnroe was surprised by Gerolitis. Might be that might be less of a surprise from here on in because Gerolitis had a great tournament up in Madison Square Garden mm -hmm. in the Masters. He's had an excellent tournament here. Shot looked like it hit right on the sideline. 
McEnroe looking down to see at the moment. Hasn't disagreed. And if he didn't agree, he'd let you know. One thing about these courts, it does leave a mark. You can look at it. First one for either player. Vilas got this far last year in this event. Can't finish fourth. That looping swing at the ground stroke, there's no way that the player can read that you're going to make that top spin lob. It's the same kind of a stroke, so it has disguise automatically. And if you do it well, it can be very difficult to handle. Ball. Again, Patrick. Not on my side. Your hair might get straight. <laughs> That's why. Thirty forty. Bad break for V loss. Would have had a winner on a passing shot, but the ball hit the top of the net and went wide in his break point for McEnroe. McEnroe already has a service break. And leads two games to love. Yep. Just wide. Dude. That is something he did not do against Borg at all, is go for that first, that big serve. Perhaps he felt that Borg could handle it anyway, but if you get that cannonball in, it can still be effective from time to time, even on this slow surface. Two games to one. An eight game pro set. It rained all night, most of the day, and continues to sprinkle a little bit. Love 15. That's a ball that I think Macamer rushes a little too much. If he would not take it quite so much on the rise, he could measure it better and we'd more have to make a good shot. 15 all.
Offensive lob by McEnroe is hit with underspin somewhat into the wind so that you can drive it a little bit more. It gets clears over your opponent's head and sort of dies. It sinks back down. That's out. 30 all. Take him out of court, get in and block the volley off in the opposite direction. Vilas had a little trouble with the footwork on the slippery court. You gotta make up your mind it's slippery. You just forget it and do the best you can. Say perfect right in the corner. Very deep. You talked to him before the match, I know. Is that one of the things you may have suggested? Well, a lot of times a guy like Vilas does come in close after he makes one volley. Works against a lot of people. Of course, you make that kind of an offensive lob, it'll work on against almost anyone. Yeah. Sort of laughing at himself. He knows how tough it is over, and he's going to try to run Velos into that forehand corner because once he hits it, he can't stop. Same and thing happened to him. And I'll be interested to see what happens when they change ends. Velos is even laughing. He's saying, Man, what are you going to do? <laughs> and it's not often you see him show that much emotion on the court. There he goes again. Fifteen all. Customary patience you expect of Vilas. Well, of course, after the match with Borg, he was criticized by a lot of people for not being more aggressive, by not changing what he does. So maybe he decided uh, somewhere along the line he will try that. Okay. 
15-40. McEnroe has stayed back more than usual for him. Velas, Velas didn't like the call at all. And I think McEnroe felt that it was not a correct call. John goes over and circles one waiver by the doubles line in jest. Break point for McEnroe, a very lazy type attempt that time by John, trying to make that passing shot up the line. Oh. McEnroe, I think, has broken a string. said two balls. Did you hear him say? No, I didn't. <laughs> At any rate, Velas has saved two break points. In fact, it does. Sudden the sun has come out. It looked like it would never happen today. People are loving it. Yeah. So are we. Oh. Just missed. It was a fall. Both wide and long, you can see that mark very easily. Deuce. It's good play from time to time. Take your opponent's second serve on the clay court. Make a good approach and attack. Make them think more about trying to do a little extra with the second serve. First ace in Vilas. Huh? 
for a moment looked like that miss hit by Vilas was going to have enough topspin to come down, land in the court. Zap by about a foot. <laughs> Court. The only place you could go was up the line or throw up a lob. McEnroe should have been favoring that side, but it was a super shot by Vilas, as you see right there. Vilas almost lost his footing when he came to a stop on the other side. Tried to slide and couldn't. Winston in the chair asking him to settle down a little bit. Back and row. Obviously not too much disturbed, not taking as much time as he usually does when he serves. But effective nevertheless. Sunshine stays out with the breeze, the court will dry out fairly quickly, which would be helpful to all concerned. Something had jumped about an extra six feet. It was way over McEnroe's head. There's a scuffed up spot just behind the service line on that end of the court. McEnroe's in. Looks like it hit that. 40, 15. It's one thing about this type of surface, hard true. It's a composition. And when you play in a while, you run, you slide. The edge of your shoe will sort of mound up a little bit. It'll make little mounds in the top oh. dressing. And you can get some bad bounces. And you'll see players always sort of sliding their feet around, smoothing out the different areas in the court. Interesting match for me, Pat, because in Davis Cup uh, uh, weekend after next, we play in Mexico City, 
If we win that, in all probability, we'll be playing in Argentina two weeks later. 15 love. And this will be a major confrontation between these two. Both of those places uh, are clay. Yes. This should help McEnroe then. 15 all. Any matches he plays on this kind of a surface will help him learn to play on it better. So that we made his first volley, it was from a low position, he couldn't get anything on it, and it made it pretty simple for Vilas to get the next one down at his feet, cross court. If you're coming in, you don't penetrate with that volley or good trouble on the surface. leads four games to two. Eight game pro set. If they get the seven all they play the 12 point tiebreaker. serve and McEnroe now leads four games to three. McEnroe leads four games to three. John McEnroe Let's four games, Guillermo Vilas three. Eight game pro set. John Mack waiting for Thank what will eventually be a capacity crowd to settle down a little bit. 15 love. Vilas again almost fell down at the other end of the court. I get a kick out because he looks over at his coach Tyriac after he does that, like saying, We'll do something about it. You know, help me. Get out of here and get out here and fix that thing. <laughs> Dry it up. Up. 30. There is love. Ian Tyriac. Uh, Get him, get his hair dryer out and put it out there and dry the court a little bit. <laughs> he's a super guy, you know. Fortunately, he's not as mean as he looks. I'll tell you what, I was up early yesterday morning looking out over the golf course. He was out there with a youngster about four years old with an undersized 15. tennis racket giving him tennis instructions. Tyriac. Tells you something about the man. 30-15. 30 all. McEnroe had the opening, but didn't time the ball very well at all. Got the center line. That's his first days. They all have it. They both have one. Great drop volley by Mack. Game. A very tough shot. So he Mackinac takes a 5-3 lead. Three lead. Five games to three. And again, Vilas had trouble getting underway when he started up. I don't think he would have made it anyway. He could have been the starting blocks and not gotten to that one. 
And I, I think uh, if you ask McEnroe, were you trying to make a drop volley out of that? He'd say, no, I was just trying to get my racket on it. <laughs> it just worked out well for him. Good serve. Fair King Love. for Guillermo. <laughs> Too short on the approach shot. The last ball hit right on the Three, line. 15. Not on the tape. I don't see any mark. That is Herb Lewis. Been around a long time. 40, 15. Lefties, two of the best in the world. They got some weapons. Good deep serve by Velas pays off. McEnroe now Game leads five Vila. games to four. John McEnroe leads five games to four in this eight game pro set. And he's serving with new balls. Again, not a distinct advantage on this type of surface. It would be a big advantage or a helpful advantage on grass. Indecision that time on McEnroe's part. I think he wasn't sure whether to hit it or let it go. Pace caught the top of the net and bounced over his racket. It would have been a tough shot anyway, right at him like that. Set up by the original, the, the previous plays. Take a look. This one right here, we has to half volley. Now McEnroe has a little time, though it was pretty deep. Back to the action. Missed the volley. 13 30. See how far Velas was out of court. It's tough to do on this kind of a surface. But boy, if you can swing him that wide, you're in pretty good shape. Oh. 
Great point for Velas. A real 30. careless play by McEnroe. I wonder if the wind had an effect on that ball. It looked like he lost control of it for a minute. Obviously, he did. It went way out. Well, Pat, there's no, there's, when it's windy, if the ball is not being hit hard, it'll be moved around, buffered more by the wind than if you drive it. You get there. Velas is broken back to get even at five all. Here's another part. Now the half volley here went up too high. Velas has the racket right out in front. Rolls her cross court. No way back it could get there. And that young man has gotten his service break back to get even at five all in this eight game pro set. If we get the seven all, we'll play the 12 point tiebreaker. And of course, the first player to reach seven with at least a two point advantage would be the winner of this match. Suddenly gotten hot. 30. Second Love. service ace for him. He's been going after that first serve a lot harder than he did against Borg the other day. You pump it enough times, you're going to make a few of them. hit that big looping shot this crowd went ah oh, like it's going way out and it dropped in by about six feet it did look like when it left it was going way out the top spin does wonders had McEnroe about 15 feet behind the baseline gave him one of those big loop jobs McEnroe tried to loop it back from way up over his head and out popped a mouse <laughs> hit both edges of the racket and ran down his elbow 40 15. This is part of that last point of the last game. You see McEnroe slips here, just about goes down. You see he's got his hand on the ground. He still manages to get over and get his racket on it, but there's a crosswind from right to left as you view it, and the ball is blown well wide. Now we get back to the action at 5 6. First serves a fault. This is an eight game pro set. First player to win eight games by a margin of two will be the victor. I tell you, you can't smash it much closer to that sideline.
miss hit goes well out and it's 40 love. McEnroe trying to get even. At six all. Tony, they are used to sliding and they can't slide because of the rain that we've had. And they almost fall down almost every time when they try to stop over there. Either their foot, they slide a lot, Pat, maybe it's extra slip around there, or it sticks, as you say, and it sort of grabs and throws them off balance. But both players have had difficulty stopping and getting out of that corner. And of course, as a player, you know that's the case. I'd run that guy in there as much as I could. That's mm. part of my job. Six all. Uh, oh. Good quickness by Velas. Here's part of that last point. There's a good deep approach. Not a lot of pace. The ball is down. McEnroe tries to drop it gently, but he didn't he got it too deep. Velas ends up winning the point. 15 love. Sort of a suicide play, you know. You take that ball on the run as you're coming forward, and you better make a good shot. If you do, chances are you'll win with it. If you don't, you hit it too short, probably all over. ball down on you when you're at the net. It's sort of you want to try to just drop it over. You think you can drop it over the soft place so no one can get to it because it won't bounce too high. And if you do it perfectly, it works fine. If not, that's the result. The other option is to try to punch it back deep without a whole lot of pace, but keep your opponent farther away from you. Slips just trying to make a routine move. He's fine. Party. Big serve, big smash. 
Vilas, and he leads seven the games to six. Pat Summerall with Tony Travert playing an eight game pro set. Vilas over McEnroe, seven games to six. McEnroe will serve from the That's far end. Now. If it gets to be seven all, they'll play the 12 point tiebreaker. If Vilas wins this game, he wins the match. That time by Vilas trying to make the approach shot. Missed by two or three feet in the alley. Ball. Way out of court. And the little backhand drop volley paid off. 30 15. Good return of serve by Vilas. 30 all. Pat, we talk a lot about depth. You hear us talk about it all the time, and it doesn't matter what kind of surface you're on. If you get it deep, it usually pays off very well. <laughs> the wind carried that one out. Belas did a good job to get to it. And I think if it had been calm, that ball would have been good. And right down the center of the court, Shows you how strong that wind is once that ball gets up in the air and is not traveling very fast. Oh. Trying to stop and go Dude. back the other way. Good play on a slippery court is what we call wrong foot your opponent. You go in behind them, you run him into a corner. When they're coming out, you go back into that same corner because it's hard for them to stop with sort of treacherous footing, get back and still make a shot. Serve by McEnroe. Gets him to seven all and we go into the 
12 point tiebreaker. Now play a 12 point tiebreaker. Crowd really getting into it now, yelling for both players. Some of them might have gotten into something before they got here. <laughs> That's very possible. Tiebreaker. You have to get seven points, but have at least a two point advantage. It's wide. Short, there was nothing on it, and it gave Vilas another real good swing at it. You can't give good players that many swings at passing shots, particularly on a slow service where the ball is high. hit what you call an off forehand instead of pulling it he went out the other way really did seem to fool McEnroe he dove out there at the last minute ended up making a drop volley for a winner change ends you play six points from one end of the court and then change there is no break I'm not supposed to towel off or drink water or anything once while they grab a quick towel as they go mm -hmm. by Court. Watch where he is beyond the doubles line, just into the alley when he makes that backhand cross court with a lot of top spin, a lot of pace. On, All McEnroe got was a laundry bill. <laughs> Had a lot of good points in this, mm -hmm. in this match, not just a tiebreaker, but some terrific tennis. Oops. Fought hard at it. You got to know that both are disappointed in playing this match instead of playing the, the final. I always 
disliked intensely consolation games. seven points with at least a two point advantage to be the winner that will conclude this match. Yeah, drop volley by Vilas hit on the service line. McEnroe five, Vilas four. Gave McEnroe any choice of shots he wanted. Helpless feeling standing up there like Vilas was after that shot. But he did, he did the only thing you can do, and that's wait and then guess and go one way or the other. He just happened to guess wrong. McEnroe can serve out the match if he can win these two serves. <laughs> now he can't. Five all. Chris Volley. McEnroe six, Vilas five. Now it's match point for McEnroe. Obviously, there's a player now that the dilemma is the server is do you go for that first serve, the big one? And if I miss it, sort of have to be careful on the second one, let the other guy take advantage of you? Or do I spin it in and get the ball in play? Let's see what Vilas chooses to do. There it is. Game. He thought the serve was long. He hesitated right after he hit it. Seven games to five. Thank you very much. Seven five back and roll. And he wins over the last. I've got with me John McEnroe, one of the best tennis players in the world. He's almost 21 years of age as we sit here doing this interview. And John, a lot of people know you as a left-hander who has a lot of talent. You've gotten in trouble on the court once in a while, but I don't think many people know much about you off, off the court. What kind of hobbies do you have? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I didn't know you'd start off with that question. I mean, uh, basically, I can't think of like too many offhand. I mean, I guess. Anything any other 20-year-old would do, just, you know, have a good time and enjoy myself. And uh, we're traveling around a lot of the year, so it's not really too much time to do anything else besides play tennis, I guess. So you call and uh, being 20 years old and travel around having a good time, that's a hobby, huh? Well, I mean, the things that go along with it, like going out, you know, a little dancing here and there, you know, I mean, if no one's watching, you know, that type of thing. I like to listen to music a lot, go to concerts, but nothing to, uh, I'm not like a painter, if that's what you're asking. You don't write poems and things like that? Well, you know, uh, Ode of a Loser this week. <laughs> you know, that's my poem. Okay, what kind of music do you like? Well, you know, rock and roll. I go to a lot of concerts. I made a big debut in Australia. Came on stage with a couple uh, performers and had, you know, my dream come true, you know. And uh, any particular group that's your favorite? Well, I like Eddie Money, Super Tramp, you know, uh, Rolling Stones. Anything you like. <laughs> How about how about um, 
your family. You got brothers I know that play tennis. Let's talk about them. You got any sisters? No sisters at all. Um, two younger brothers, and uh, they all come down to this tournament every year, and uh, they come to the Davis Cup matches, as you know. And uh, basically, I don't really see them too much. Only when I'm in New York, or you know, doing something like this, when you, it's nice to come down to vacation. There is a particular network that covers most of the important tennis matches uh, in the United States. You have any idea who that is? Is that? Uh, oh. Um, I guess that must be CBS. Obviously, if we're like doing this interview for Boca Raton. I mean, I wish I was playing right now, but. Uh, well, good, John. You got that one right. Uh, you well, were I just wanted to throw. You know, I mean, since you're the newscaster of the year or whatever, I mean, obviously it's got to be the best network. Now, if I if you had to pick uh, the greatest tennis player of all time, who would it be? Besides you? <laughs> no, I said it at dinner the other <laughs> week. Um, I don't know. I mean, Rod Laver was my idol when I was growing up, so. Uh, I thought he was great. I probably think he's one of the greatest. I mean, I didn't really, you're a little before my time, I hate to admit. Uh, that, that brings up a question. Uh, someone asked you after we played in Australia last October in Davis Cup, it was a very windy day, and you were with me when somebody said to me when I played in Australia 25 years ago, was it that windy? And what did you say? I don't rem I think I said something to the effect that there was no wind in those days. <laughs> it was so long ago they didn't have wind. That's what John McEnroe said to me. Anyway, John. Uh, we want to thank you for being with us. Uh, we hope this will be a little bit of a glimpse for our fans and your friends uh, into your life other than the tennis. And we wish you well. We we'll look forward to having you in Davis well, Cup. I'd also like to say hello to Stacy in California if that's possible. Who's Stacy? Stacy's a girl that's a very good tennis player, and she's a very nice girl, and she comes to the Davis Cup matches and very nice, and she's going to win the tournament next week, and that's that. Well, she's a left-hander. You're a left-hander. They say that lefties are flakes. Is there anything to that? I think that's a true statement. <laughs> I, mean, I certainly am. <laughs> John, thanks a lot for being with us. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Vilas remained one of the game's finest players, if not quite at the level of a McEnroe, Bjorn Borg, and Jimmy Connors, then certainly very close. And, you know, to this day, Vilas's love for tennis is really unsurpassed, as evidenced by his frequent attendance at every Grand Slam tournament. Meanwhile, McEnroe would confess years later that this was the period when he was most enjoying tennis. From 79 to 81, John said he relished a chance to topple Connors and pursue Borg. That he did it with such artistry and skill instantly made him a tennis superstar. And, oh, let's not forget, he also sprinkled in a little personality. And it's one of the reasons we love him to this day. For this edition of Tennis Channel Classics and our presentation of the Pepsi Grand Slam, I'm Kevin Frazier, and of course, we'll see you next time.